underwater sensor networks this particular topic will be covered in four parts so this is the first part part 1 so what is underwater sensor network so as this name suggests again that it is a sensor network which is submerged under water so this this sensor network basically operate under water right so under the surface of water so so essentially what we have understood so far in terms of terrestrial sensor networks the same concept if we think of in an underwater environment and if we try to implement those concepts in such an environment then what will result is an underwater sensor network so in an underwater sensor network what we have are different types of nodes these nodes are wireless nodes but these are you know the, these nodes they communicate with one another not through rf as in the case of a terrestrial sensor network but using acoustic mode of communication so look at this particular underwater sensor network so we have these different nodes which are deployed at different depths and these nodes they can talk to one another using acoustic communication so one node would be sending acoustic communication signal to another node and so on and so forth and these networks you know these nodes let us assume that we are focusing on a particular node like this one and this node you know it is going to sense certain underwater phenomena around this particular node and similarly the other nodes are also going to do the same and like as we have understood in the case of terrestrial sensor networks here also a multi hop kind of mechanism is implemented and these nodes through a multi hop path they are going to send the data to the surface station the surface station then essentially collects the data and then that data is analyzed to under to understand that what all phenomena are going on underneath uh, uh, the, the water surface and what is occurring around the water surface and so on so basically what we have in an underwater sensor network or uwsns is we have a network of self powered wireless sensor nodes which are autonomous and not only that these nodes are going to be the only ones that are going to participate in this network even you can have autonomous vehicles like rovs auvs euvs and so on which can also act as different other nodes and together these individual nodes the sensor nodes the rovs auvs etc and uh, uh, you know every everything together uh, uh, they, they they will be communicating with each other and uh, the the, uh, the the sensed information is going to be finally brought back to the surface sink through multi hop path so let us look at this particular picture over here what we have is over here we have um, you know the surface sinks the surface sinks on the surface can communicate through rf but under the surface of water they are not going to communicate through rf but through acoustic mode so acoustic mode of communication and rf mode of communication together will be supported by each of these surface sink nodes so another pictorial view of these networks is shown over here so what we have is a source station then we have these surface sink nodes and we have these underwater nodes underwater sensor nodes or underwater other nodes a mobile docker etc etc so these nodes they will be able to communicate with each other and the data will be sent typically in real time to the surface sink stations like this one this one etc and they are finally going to send the data to the source station and for further analysis and so on another view of underwater sensor networks the top most figure so what we have is uh, you know th this is something that we have already seen you know this kind of structure we have already seen in the acoustic sense uh, sorry in uh, terrestrial sensor networks where rf communication was used so exactly the same kind of structure is adopted in this environment as well 
underwater environment as well. So, the only difference is that acoustic mode of communication plus everything that happens is underwater under the surface of water and the sink node is typically placed on the surface of the water and the sink node basically receives the data and for further analysis and so on. Now, if we look at over here, so data typically from the surface sinks will be brought back uh, brought uh, using long range uh, communication like GSM or uh, you know uh, other other broadband uh, communication mechanisms uh, to the control center and at the control center the data are stored in different repositories where different queries can be run uh, using different query tools and so on uh, and uh, different uh, analytics um, uh, will be produced. So, here again another view uh, of uh, underwater sensor networks here what we see is these nodes uh, uh, you know so uh, from the surface sink there are a couple of nodes which are basically stringed these are stringed to these underwater sensor nodes from the surface sink. Similarly, these nodes are also stringed or they are tied that means, they are wired and in this particular case what we see is in this deployment uh, around these wired sensor nodes uh, um, uh, there are different other uh, wireless sensor nodes which will be communicating uh, through short range communication uh, 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 short range communication with these wired sensor nodes and these wired sensor nodes are going to send the data to the uh, the, the surface sink node. So, why do we need underwater sensor networks? There are different advantages of underwater sensor networks. So, first of all real time monitoring is something that is very interesting that is very important. So, standalone sensor nodes which are dipped underwater uh, they uh, you know uh, they can record information that are occurring around them the standalone ones, uh, uh, but you know the, that is the traditional way in uh, by how uh, you know uh, the traditional uh, you know the sensor, sensor data are retrieved from under under water. Uh, but uh, by doing that you know so uh, the, these uh, only uh, by recovering uh, uh, the these nodes which are uh, which are sinking under water uh, recovering them on the surface shore uh, then only the data can be obtained from them. Uh, but using underwater sensor networks one can do real time monitoring of uh, the, the region uh, the or the or the, or the uh, oceanic column uh, around which uh, the uh, these uh, uh, underwater sensor networks are deployed. And uh, there are different other advantages as well I am not going to go through them uh, these are given in uh, in front of you, uh, but there are other uh, disadvantages also. Uh, uh, so, these disadvantages uh, we are not focusing over here, uh, but uh, what we see over here are the disadvantages of the traditional approach and uh, you know how that is overcome by the UWSN approach. So, the differences between terrestrial wireless sensor networks and underwater sensor networks is like this. So, with respect to cost you know terrestrial sensor networks are much cheaper compared to the underwater sensor networks. A underwater sensor node is very costly and underwater sensor network uh, uh, you know deployment is also much more difficult compared to terrestrial sensor network deployment. Node mobility obviously, is uh, very different. So, in the case of terrestrial sensor networks if we if we are even if we are talking about mobile sensor networks there also there can be active mobility uh, which uh, will be moving the nodes from one point to another. Really it is going to happen that uh, physical phenomena like wind or something like that is going to move the nodes from one point to another, but in the case of underwater environments uh, you know mobility of nodes due to underwater currents waves etcetera are very common phenomena. So, node mobility is very different uh, in the case of underwater sensor networks uh, from uh, the ter terrestrial sensor networks. In underwater uh, communication environments in underwater channels basically there is high spatio temporal variability of these channels mm, uh, so with time right. So, time and space there is high variability of these channels compared to the terrestrial environment. Additionally, uh, the amount of bandwidth that is available for communication in underwater environments is much lower compared to the terrestrial environment and uh, more transmission power is also required in, uh, in the case of uh, underwater sensor networks. Uh, 
uh, compared to the terrestrial ones and also more memory is required for data caching because these nodes they are uh, you know less powerful uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know communication uh, because of the medium in, uh, in which they are communicating these underwater sensor nodes. So, uh, you know lot of data caching requirements are there. Uh, and so, there is more memory uh, required for data caching and uh, the amount of delay and the variability of delay uh, is also quite high uh, with underwater sensor nodes. So, basically from uh, under uh, the ocean column uh, you know if a signal pulse is sent uh, by a particular node. Uh, for that pulse to reach to the surface uh, sink uh, that is going to take much longer duration than the similar distance in terrestrial environments. So, this now I am going to show you some of the pictures of uh, different applications of uh, uh, underwater sensor networks. Underwater sensor networks can be used for uh, ocean, uh, uh, ocean monitoring, ocean environment monitoring. Uh, like coral reef monitoring uh, and uh, monitoring of uh, um, you know uh, uh, different uh, uh, oils uh, underwater you know oil uh, mineral mineral resources underwater um, can be used for ocean mapping underwater sensor networks typically uh, you know uh, they, they find uh, lot of use lot of applicability uh, for ocean mapping uh, ocean mapping means like you know how is the ocean column you know and uh, how is the ocean floor you know typically as we know that the ocean floor uh, is not uh, uh, generally flat uh, at uh, ma many most of the places uh, underwater. Uh, so, there is lot of variability there are lots of ridges mountains etcetera under under the surface of uh, uh, in, in the ocean ocean floors. So, mapping of the ocean floors can also be performed using uh, underwater sensor networks. Uh, oil and mineral exploration is another thing that I already mentioned um, using underwater sensor networks this can this is something that can be achieved. And disaster management tsunamis uh, different tidal waves etcetera etcetera you know uh, prevention from those uh, prevention of uh, coastal areas from these natural disasters. Uh, so, uh, you know uh, prediction of tsunamis coming pre prediction of huge waves tides etcetera coming. So, those can be obtained uh, through the deployment of underwater sensor networks. Another is assisted navigation and tra uh, tracking uh, you know uh, so uh, like you know a big ship or a submarine it can help in uh, you know uh, uh, in tracking uh, 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 tracking different other um, uh, you know uh, different other activities underwater. The same kind of thing can also be adopted even a submarine can be tracked. Uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, even a submarine can be assisted in its navigation using underwater sensor networks. Now, here is uh, a uh, on the on the left hand side what we see uh, see is basically an uh, you know a pictorial uh, view of uh, a underwater sensor node which is called the aqua node uh, a, a particular type of underwater sensor node which is called the aqua node. And uh, so, basically these kind of nodes they can be used for connecting interconnecting uh, uh, and forming a, a underwater sensor network. So, in a aqua node uh, or any other underwater sensor node uh, typically what happens is we have the similar kind of components as we also saw in the case of terrestrial sensor nodes. Uh, we have obviously, we have a sensor component, we have sensor interface circuitry we have the CPU uh, onboard controller, we have a power supply, we have acoustic modem. Uh, the only thing is that the modem over here is acoustic modem and obviously, we have a memory unit as well. So, AUVs and ROVs autonomous underwater vehicles and uh, uh, remotely operated vehicles these are uh, things which are also used uh, in conjunction with uh, UWSNs. Uh, so, these are the pictures of autonomous underwater vehicles. Uh, so, these autonomous underwater vehicles can also act as data mules. So, which will collect the data from these different sensor nodes underwater sensor nodes and bring the data uh, to a different point may be the surface of the uh, surface of water or whatever. So, like this you know they have different uh, different uh, uh, uses the UVs can uh, be used along with uh, underwater sensor networks typical underwater sensor networks to aid in different processes. 
So, uh, in uh, the top left figure what we see are the different components of AUV. So, I am not going to again explicitly mention each and every of one of them, uh, but it is quite uh, obvious you know um, by going through you can understand that what each of these components do. So, uh, so, there are different research challenges uh, yeah, in implementing underwater sensor networks. The underwater environment itself is quite challenging. So, first of all unlike in the case of terrestrial sensor networks, where typically we are talking about uh, deployment of the sensor nodes typically in a 2D, 2D kind of plane. Here in underwater environment, we are talking about sensor node deployment in the 3D space. 3D space means what happens is starting from the very bottom that means, the ocean bottom to the ocean surface throughout you are going to deploy these sensor nodes and these nodes which, which are deployed they have to maintain their position the x y z position on inside the ocean column right. So, uh, the, the you know even maintaining these positions the you know the way, uh, the defined positions of the sensor nodes is very difficult because of the high degree of dynamism of the underwater ocean uh, uh, you know environments. So, these environments are typically uh, you know very much chaotic there are lots of different types of underwater currents waves etcetera hi which hit uh, uh, these nodes. So, these nodes are subjected to passive mobility because of these uh, currents and waves hitting them uh, these nodes can move from one point to another. And so, there is passive node mobility time synchronization is another very uh, interesting uh, uh, challenge uh, time synchronization means that uh, you know these nodes that are de deployed at different places you know they have to be time synchronized. Otherwise, you know uh, the obvious problems of uh, networking that we already are uh, uh, aware aware of those things are going to happen and how you are going to time synchronize these different nodes that is a very huge challenge. Uh, there has to be a centralized clocking mechanism, but that centralized clocking mechanism cannot be implemented in these uh, environments right. So, this is one thing additionally there are physical phenomena uh, uh, such as fading multipath uh, you know uh, multipath uh, uh, multipath uh, distortions signal reflection etcetera which also affect the signal quality uh, for communication in these environments. And these environments due to these high degrees of dynamism are prone to different types of failures and so on. So, these pictures that you see in front of you I do not need to explain them again. So, these are the concepts that I have explained in different ways earlier. So, the sensor nodes can be deployed on the ocean bottom or they can be floating uh, in the ocean column or uh, uh, they can be placed on the surface of the, uh, the, the, the oceanic column right. So, uh, so, whatever be it these different nodes they will have to interconnect with one another to bring these sensed information to the surface for further analysis and so on. So, essentially what we have if we look at this particular picture is we have an acoustic uh, environment acoustic channel and uh, so this particular source node in this example through multi hop it is going to uh, send the data that is data through these different nodes are going to be brought to the surface sync nodes uh, as shown over here. And these are the surface gateways and these nodes are termed as the cross nodes. So, this is the overall implementation you know this is the overall topology of a uh, underwater uh, sensor network this is what has to be implemented in practice. And the acoustic channel if we talk about you know it is it has variable sound speed right. So, the sound speed at one point uh, in the ocean column is not the same as another point in the ocean column not only that it is not only vertical, but also lateral laterally also the sound speed varies a lot right. So, uh, but you know if you if you go down the ocean column the variation is quite prominent. Uh, so, this is one thing the second is that low bandwidth and bit rate uh, this is uh, uh, also another typical feature of uh, these underwater uh, in environments variable propagation delay uh, high error probability asymmetric power consumption asymmetric power consumption is also a very interesting feature that is typical of underwater sensor networks. So, uh, so this is one thing and another very interesting uh, thing that we should also know about uh, uh, you know underwater environments is that uh, there are things called shadow zones for any kind and kind of underwater communication they uh, you know shadow zones are typically present. And the shadow zones basically are the ones where through which 
uh, these uh, signals the waves the communication signals do not uh, pass through the signals will not be able to penetrate through the shadow zones right so this is how the shadow zones are created as shown pictorially and uh, so due to this shadow zone basically you know what happens is some of the communication is uh, you know the overall communication is uh, inefficient uh, the overall uh, the some of the signals are typically not received on the surface uh, the way they should be received and so on because of the presence of the shadow zones the overall performance of these networks are typically affected due to the presence of shadow zones some of the properties of uh, uh, you know uh, of oceanic water sea water uh, so if we talk about pro fundamental properties like temperature pressure and salinity so temperature with depth it goes down the more we go down deeper into the ocean the temperature basically goes down it becomes cooler and cooler the second is the the pressure the pressure also the pressure basically increases as we go downwards in the ocean column because you know more you know more volume of water is going to be above right so so the, the so basically you know that leads to because there will be so the more you go down there will be more water above you and that is why the pressure uh, the water pressure is uh, uh, higher in the when one goes downwards in the ocean column uh, third is the salinity salinity basically reduces with depth um, this is uh, another very fundamental property of uh, this ocean or sea water uh, the second uh, is the dependent properties density basically decreases with depth velocity of sound increases with depth viscosity goes down with temperature in and propagation loss uh, basically increases with frequency so these are the different variations with depth temperature and frequency of the different properties of sea water ocean water so pictorially let us look at two of them so one is the temperature variation with depth and the sound velocity variation so this is what we see so if when we talk about uh, the oceanic column so it is basically uh, typically it can be segmented into different layers or different zones so the first one is the isothermal layer um, uh, then we have the thermocline layer and then we have the deep ocean layer so these are the different zones so how the temperature varies with depth when one goes down the isothermal then thermocline and the deep ocean are shown through this particular plot then the second plot basically shows how the sound velocity changes when one goes down in the ocean column so initially there is a slight increase due to increase in the pressure then there is slight decrease due to decrease in temperature decrease of what increase and decrease of the velocity so slight increase of the velocity due to the increase in the pressure then there is slight decrease in the velocity due to the decrease in the temperature and there is slight increase thereafter due to increase in pressure so this is how the sound velocity basically varies with depth so when we talk about the physical layer uh, in communication uh, uh, for underwater uh, so there are different things that happen so one of the things one of the properties is uh, uh, so uh, if we think about the propagation the sound wave propagation the velocity of sound wave propagation that basically significantly gets reduced this is number one second thing is there is lot of propagation loss in underwater channels you know so wave propagation loss signal propagation loss there is quite significant amount of loss in underwater environments third is multipath propagation uh, there is a lot of uh, multipath uh, distortions etc you know uh, which basically affect uh, these the physical layer of these communication uh, environments underwater communication environments there is lot of ambient noise ambient noise due to maybe mammals uh, you know uh, and different other you know water currents and so on etc there is a lot of ambient noise in underwater environments uh, doppler effect uh, so doppler effect is very interesting because you know we are here talking about sound sources that means sound mode of communication acoustic mode of communication and as we know that when the nodes move when sound sources move it might so happen that doppler effect might be observed and uh, if you if we uh, recall from our uh, plus 2 physics uh, so the doppler you know the observed frequency uh, you know through doppler effect f equal to 1 plus delta v by c uh, uh, times f0 
where f 0 is the actual frequency. So, so, you see that the actual frequency uh, is no longer there and it is changed it uh, you know it, it basically uh, increases. So, uh, uh, so there are other properties uh, properties of uh, uh, the signal velocity. Uh, so, for R f uh, in air uh, you know it is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second the speed. Uh, the high frequency R f signal gets attenuated in water, uh, acoustic signal is used for underwater communication and the speed of underwater acoustic wave is 1.5 kilometers per second. Okay. So, 1500 meters per second, this is the speed of uh, underwater uh, signals, underwater wa acoustic waves. There is lot of propagation loss, there is lot of propagation loss the sound wave amplitude basically diminishes quite fast. Uh, then the second thing is the sound wave gets attenuated due to absorption by the medium. Third is that the sound wave energy can be converted to other forms and the propagation loss happens to sound waves due to spherical loss. Multipath effects, uh, multipath phenomena are quite uh, prominent as I said before in underwater environments. Uh, this occurs due to the reflection of these waves, sound waves on the water surface and uh, ocean bottom and so on. The, the sound waves they get reflected uh, in the water due to the low speed of water and also the variable variable speed of water at the different layers there also the reflection of the sound waves can occur. Uh, so, all of these you know leads to multipath effects and these basically will lead to overall the severe degradation of the acoustic signal uh, uh, strength. Ambient noise, uh, noise associated due to the background uh, uh, or the surrounding environment uh, due to hydrodynamics that means, the movement of water including tides, currents, storms etcetera, seismic activities may be underwater volcanoes, um, earthquakes, shifting of the seabed, biological phenomena may be you know uh, noises that are made by the mammals like under uh, you know the oceanic mammals marine mammals like whales, dolphins etcetera. Uh, the ambient noise field is so complex that magnitude of the noise directly affects the SNR of the receiver. So, this is something very serious issue uh, and which should be taken care of when dealing with underwater communication. Doppler effect is something that I have already mentioned what we have the transmitter and the receiver uh, they basically move continuously and these are sound sources right. So, consequently uh, due to the movement or mobility of the sound sources Doppler effect comes into picture and uh, so this is something that has to be taken care of uh, you know uh, Doppler effect has to be taken care of while dealing with underwater communication. So, the second uh, the next thing is basically uh, there are different models for building underwater uh, uh, you know underwater sensor networks. Uh, there are 2 D models, there are 3 D models, there are hybrid models which are basically combination of 2 D and the 3 D models. So, I am going to talk about these in the next uh, lecture and there are static underwater sensor network models plus under uh, you know mobile underwater sensor network mo mo models and hybrid of these two these are the different types of different uh, you know underwater sensor network models that are available. Localization is a very important issue localization talks about determining the location of a particular object by exploiting the special relationships between the different objects. So, if we know the location of the different nodes in a in a particular terrain. So, with respect to as a function of those locations can we determine the location of an unknown node. So, this is how it uh, looks. So, let us say that we have 4 nodes 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so, these are the 4 uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, the blue colored nodes are the ones which have the locations known and let us assume that this particular node does not know its location we have to find the location of this particular node. So, then uh, so, so, uh, so this is how we have. So, we have nodes a, b and c whose locations are known and then uh, uh, so, we have to find the location of this particular node as a function of the locations of nodes a, b and c. This is the whole uh, idea behind uh, the problem of localization in uh, uh, in sensor networks. So, so the whole idea is why do you want to localize these uh, sensor nodes, why do you want to tag the sensor nodes with their corresponding locations, why do you want to know the locations, because you know it is important to find out where each of these nodes are 
and uh, because that way the sensor data that is being sent by each of these nodes you can tag the location information along with. So, that at the base station where the sensor no data are retrieved. Uh, so, there basically one can infer that where from the sensor data has come from which particular sensor node and where it, it was at a particular instant of time. So, so this basically that is why the location uh, localization uh, 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 you know uh, comes in handy. Localization basically has different applications target tracking is one, environmental monitoring is second, ocean mapping is third and uh, you know also localization uh, you know loca uh, knowing the locations of the different nodes that basically is used uh, to make routing protocols efficient. The geographic routing protocols basically harness the locations of the different nodes in the network. So, these are some of the important references. Additionally, you know, uh, you know uh, there is a good treatment of underwater sensor networks. Uh, in the book uh, Principles of Underwater Sensor Networks, which is authored by Kobaidat and Mishra and has been published in uh, the uh, Cambridge University Press. Thank you.